Welcome back. This is the second part of my tools and art supplies that I just cannot live without in my art studio. This is a two part video. The first part was about the art supplies, the paints, the brushes and the pencils, which I will link up here for you. This is the second part where I show you the peripheral tools that isn't necessarily art supply, but is incredibly, incredibly useful in my art practice that I just cannot live without. First up are some hand tools. Now this one is a bone folder and it's a very, very well used bone folder as you can see and I use this for when I am making smaller sheets of watercolor paper out of the big imperial sheet. The way I tend to create smaller pieces is by folding the watercolor paper. What you do is you get a sheet of watercolor paper, you fold it and then I run the bone folder along the fold, open it up and then what you do is fold it the other way so you're now outwards, rub the bone folder along the fold and basically you just do that so you have it doing it once twice three times and four times once you folded that line four times you'll find it really really easy for the paper to just gently tear apart exactly when you want them and four seems to be the magic number and so in that process this bone folder is absolutely critical as you can see the wear, it saves a lot of wear on my finger for me. Second tool that I really like is this agate tool. Now it doesn't have to be agate, but I ordered this because it was nice and fancy. And what I use this for is, you know, when you finished a painting and you've had the masking tape all around your sheet and you take off the masking, as you take off the masking, the paper starts to rip and tear and lift. Well, this tool is fantastic for just gently rubbing all that down again, and it works really, really well. And then it looks like a nice smooth piece of paper again. You don't have to use this fancy agate tool. It's not what the tool was designed for. It's designed for use with gold leaf sheets and it's used in burnishing to make the gold leaf that's stuck down shinier. And you can totally use things like tumbled stone, like if you have a nice rose quartz or something that's tumbled and smooth, or anything that is pebbly or marbly that is nice and smooth will work just as well. The third tool that I really like is the palette knife. And I use this one mostly for removing salt from my watercolor painting. You can just rub gently with your finger, but I find if I just touch the paper at an angle, very slight angle, so if that's flat, I'm just like doing it about this angle and just gently scrape it. You don't wanna to go too hard on it or you'll rip the paper up. But I find this much faster and much more thorough way of removing the salt than using my fingers. It gets rid of all the salt for me. Talking of paper, gloves. These white cotton gloves are so, so useful in my studio because I do handle a lot of watercolor paper. And one of the problems you can have with watercolor paper is if you get any of the grease that's on your hand onto the paper, that grease is going to act like a resist and it doesn't matter how much you try to paint over that with watercolour, it's just going to resist all that watercolour. Now I've heard you can rub some alcohol to the affected area but for me prevention is better. So what I do is I wear white cotton gloves anytime I'm handling any watercolour paper so that anything from the dot card sheets that I make for the Patreons to my own watercolor sheet, like I'm cutting it down to size, or I'm taping it down. I always, always put my white cotton gloves on just so that I know for a fact that I'm not gonna have to deal with the patch of grease problem. Next up, I wanna show you some masking related tools. These two are masking sheet. This one is a Hanover one. Of course, I will link all these items and everything else in this video in the description down below for you so that if you do decide you want to get one for yourself, 
then it's very, very easy for you to do so. This masking tape is the Hanover masking tape and I find this the best. It's not perfect. It still does pull up some watercolor paper, but it doesn't pull it up as much as the other kind of masking tapes I've tried in the past. And they come in a very, very wide range of thickness. So if you are looking for a low tack masking tape, perhaps in a different width to your standard masking tape width, then their range is definitely worth having a look and see if they can supply you what you want. Next we have the three millimeter thick masking tape and you've seen me use this mostly for doing color charts and by just taping the border lines of each swatch on the color chart with this, it just makes the whole process so much quicker because you don't have to worry about going over the lines and you also end up with a much neater color chart. Now the one problem with this particular three millimeter it's good it's very good and i like it but it is prone to lifting off the paper it is so so low tack like this thing is never going to pull up any of your watercolor paper at all you don't have to worry about that but you do have to rub it down pretty hard onto the paper if you want to make sure this thing stays it is incredibly, incredibly satisfying peeling this tape off your finished colour chart. Now this thing isn't much of a looker. You can see I've used it a lot and it's not a pretty, but it is incredibly useful if you do use a lot of masking fluid. When you come to remove your masking fluid, you can use your finger if it's a small area, but if you do a lot of it and you do it often, your finger is gonna get raw very, very quickly. And this basically works like an eraser for your masking fluid. You use it like an eraser. You just go gently over the area that you've used the masking fluid and the masking fluid will stick to this remover. Now, this thing has lots of different names. Some people call it mask away. Some people call it rubber picker upper, rubber cement remover. I will link the one that I got down below, but it is definitely worth investing in one of this. This thing will not wear down when you're using it. And so once you buy one, you're pretty set for life with this one. Now let's talk about cutting paper because that is something we do a lot as watercolor artists. We cut paper, we cut little sheets and all sorts. And as you can see, I have lots of different scissors. I always have four by my side you probably don't need four but it is a good idea to at least have two one that is specially for cutting your paper with and one for all the other stuff by separating the uses you always keep your paper scissors nice and sharp once you start using it for other stuff it gets dull very quickly so i do recommend at least having two different pairs one for cutting paper and this one is a fiskars one that is specially for cutting paper and it's very, very good. I'm very happy with it. A couple more items that are to do with cutting paper. And one is a box cutter. And I really, really like the Olfa, O-L-F-A. I'll link it down below, box cutter. It is very, very good. It's very sharp. It stays sharp for a really long time. And once it gets dull, you can just snip the ends off. I really like this brand. It feels nice and secure in my hand. It's got nice rubber grips, so it's never gonna slip out of your hand. So yeah, this is my favorite brand and model. It's the Alpha L5-AL. And it's sharp enough that it doubles up as a scalpel as well. And it can give you that fine detail that you normally have to go for a scalpel for. My other favorite cutting tool is the Kadomaru Pro. And if you've seen my swatch cards and things, you'll notice that I always round the corners off. And this is what I use to do that. And I like this partly because it's really, really well made and it's really durable, but it can also give you three different kinds of sides, small, medium, and large corners. So it's a really, really versatile. It saves you having to buy three different corner punches and it collects all the cut bits in the pocket here. It's made by Sunstar and I will link this down below as well. Three more tools. This is a hog brush. 
it's a cheap hog brush that's for oil painting the thing i was looking for was a hog brush so that it's nice and strong and that the bristle was nice and short and flat and i use this just for scrubbing anything if i need a scrubber i just use this instead of like an expensive scrubbing brush that you can get for watercolor and also for cleaning if i need to clean a well out of a palette or something this is so handy and i've been really really tough on this brush in cleaning out my palettes and things quite a bit and it stands up to a lot of abuse so i think this is gonna last me a really really long time next up is a spray water bottle and if you are intending on use it directly on your painting like you want to spray onto a painted surface it's imperative that you get a fine mister rather than ones that squirts out a whole load of big dollops of water and the best ones i found are for hairdressers they have fine mister spray for their practice and that's what i use this is a kobe hairdressers fine mister and it is brilliant it creates such a fine mist that you don't see water droplets land on your watercolor painting and ruining it but it will leave your painting nice and moist so that it gives you a longer working time and finally i have a glue if you are into multimedia and you want to stick some paper down i find this paste the best and the reason why is this is acid free so you don't have to worry about the glue yellowing which you do have to worry about if you don't use acid free glue and it is compatible with watercolor so what i do is i get whatever it is that i want to paste onto the watercolor paper i will put a layer of this yes paste on then the piece of paper that i want to stick down then i also just go over the whole thing with the yes paste to make sure everything's nice and sealed and once it's dry you can totally go in and paint over the whole thing with watercolor it doesn't resist it or anything so it is brilliant if you are into multimedia with watercolor it's too thick to use as it is so what i do is i put some in a small jar and put some water in it and stir it really really well and thin it out so that was my non-art supply tools that i just cannot live without in my art studio if you want to find out where to buy any of these items i've listed everything in the description down below i hope this video was interesting and useful to you if it was then please give it a thumbs up subscribe to this channel if you haven't yet thank you so much for watching this video i hope you enjoyed it and i will see you in the next video bye